السلام علیکم آئی ہوپ یو آل آر ڈوئنگ ویل سو اگین آئی ایم ہیئر ود آر مائی تھرڈ پارٹ آف انٹرنیٹ اینڈ ڈبلیو 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 چیپٹر نمبر فائیو فرام او ڈبلو سو ان دس لیسن وی ول بی لرننگ اباؤٹ سم سائبر سیکیورٹی فریٹس اینڈ بائی دا وے فرسٹ وی ول بی لرننگ اباؤٹ وٹ از سائبر سیکیورٹی کیا ہوتی ہے اس میں تھریٹس کیا ہوتے ہیں اینڈ دین ان آل دوز تھریٹس وی ول بی لرننگ اباؤٹ ہیکنگ فارمنگ فشنگ اینڈ میل ویئر دین وی ول سالو وٹ از سوشل انجینئرنگ اینڈ ہاؤ وی کین کیپ آر ڈیٹا سیف رائٹ سو دیر ول بی ڈیفینیٹلی ون ٹو ون کانورسیشن so uh, if there will be any question you let me know in the comment section box so this will be our third and last part of this chapter then we will be starting a new chapter in our latest video first is what is cyber security threats first let's just see what is cyber security cyber security is basically security you have to maintain when you are using internet whenever you are using online your security is mandatory thing which you have to make sure right so there are a lot of threats there are a lot of problems we face when we are using internet connection so cyber security threats pose a major so the cyber security threats pose a major uh, challenge for individuals and organization that rely on digital technology to store and transmit sensitive information and then the first cyber security threat brute force attack what is brute force attack is a trial and error you are going to try something you are going to find out an error and then you are going to again uh, try find out error correct and try right so it's basically a circular motion moving uh, uh, you can say the uh method where you will try something you will find out an error you will again crack something you will fix the error and then you will again try so this method used to crack passwords or encryption key by trying every possi- possible combination until the correct one is found the aim of a brute force attack is to gain unauthorized access to a system or a network so all of those security threats all the cyber security threats we will be learning today will be to gain unauthorized access to steal something to get some information from your system data interception so data interception basically involves eavesdropping on communication means aap chup ke se kisi ki baat sun rahe ho right and that person actually do kn- know that you are learning that um, that person's communication okay so in this you will steal some sensitive information and uh, this sensitive information can be include passwords credit cards numbers or a personal data the aim of data interception is to steal information sensitive information for personal gain or to use it for further cyber attacks DDoS denial distrib- distributed denial of services attack so in this attack basically where multiple computers are used as a boots so basically multiple systems are accessing one application and that application is un- unavailable to the users okay, so sometimes aap aisa hota hai na koi ek website bhi hoti hai ki kahin par ki you can access for discounts or something like that aur jab aap us pe continuous bahut sari request karte ho to aapke paas وہاں پر کچھ بھی نہیں آ رہا ہوتا لائک سرور از ان اویلیبل اور مے بی دیر از نو فائل آن دیٹ پلیس سو آل دوز پرابلم آر کمنگ بیکاز آف بی ڈی یو ایس ڈسٹریبیوٹ ڈینائل آف سروسز سو دے فلڈ اے سرور وتھ لاٹس آف ریکویسٹ سرور اتنا آکوپائڈ ہو جاتا ہے ریکویسٹ کے پاس ریکویسٹ جو آ رہی ہوتی ہیں اس کے پاس at the same time which the server can't respond to 
so causing it to crash or become unavailable to the user sometime it's unintentional sometime ye kisi ko disturb karne ke liye aur sometime aisa hi hota hai ki bahut sare request aati hain aur response karna aasan nahi hota but usually the hackers create this type of websites jisme aap bahut zyada request karte ho same website pe aur us website ko wo wo website aapko response nahi kar pati okay so the aim of ddos is tag is to disrupt the normal functioning of a system or a network by denying users access hacking so hacking involves gaining unauthorized access to a system or the network to steal manipulate data disrupt services or cause damage so basically hacking is just to gain unauthorized access means you don't know something and something is happening in your system right so all these activities called hacking so the person who do hacking called hacker the aim of hacking can vary from personal gain to activism or cyber espionage phishing phishing is one of the threats we usually involve jisme aap kya hota hai ki फेक वेबसाइट्स बनाते हो ठीक है और यू विल एक्चुअली सेंड द फेक ईमेल्स व्हिच लुक्स लाइक ए लेजिटिमेट लाइक आप एक ऐसी ईमेल सेंड करते हो या ऐसा पेज बनाते हो जो दिखने में तो रियल लगता है बट दैट्स नॉट रियल सो ऑल दोज लिंक्स ईमेल एंड ऑल दोज आईडीज आर एक्चुअली द फिशिंग सो फिशिंग इन वॉज द यूजर इज सेंड एन ई मेल लुक्स लेजिटिमेट This contains a link to fake website where the user is encouraged to enter their details. The aim of phishing is to steal sensitive information for personal gain or to use it for further cyber attacks. Farming. Farming involves malware being downloaded. Malware means viruses, okay, without the user's knowledge. फार्मिंग इज बेसिकली हम लोग कुछ सॉफ्टवेयर डाउनलोड करते हैं जो कि जिन सॉफ्टवेयर में बेसिकली वायरसेज होते हैं और वो हमें पता भी नहीं है कि हम लोगों ने वो वायरस इंस्टॉल कर लिए राइट सो दिस री डायरेक्ट द यूज टू फेक वेबसाइट्स इट कैन शो द एब नॉर्मल बिहेवियर इन यूर सिस्टम समटाइम इट विल री डायरेक्ट यू टू अ फेक वेबसाइट समटाइम इट विल ओपन एनी एप्लीकेशन एंड समटाइम इट विल ओपन डू समथिंग अन इंटेंशनल यू डोंट नो राइट so where they are encouraged to enter their personal details name of farming is to steal information again same thing to steal in personal information or for cyber uh, further cyber attacks next is malware so it this is most important point right so malware is a malicious software designed to harm or gain unauthorized access to a system or a network these types of malware there are a lot of types of malware virus worms trojan horse spyware adware ransomware i have created another video as well if you want to check that you will go back to my channel and you can watch that video in that video i have discussed these viruses in detail so let's just quickly recap what are those viruses so virus basically kya hota is a piece of code that attacks attach itself to a legitimate programs matlab ek aap ek acha sa software jaise vlc media hai koi aapne koi aur software install kiya hai aur us software ke sath hi jo hai na ek there are some additional piece of code is attached right and then replicates it starts to spread to other programs or file on the system it can cause damage to the system including deleting data or damaging hardware a worm is similar to a virus but it is a stand alone program that can spread and replicate itself worm is basically i hope you have ever saw the worms and when you will cut that worm and maybe un accidentally it worms break so both of their bodies can survive right so this worm is actually and i have just got that idea from that worm and worm will actually self replicate okay then trojan horse trojan horse is a program 
that it serves as a legitimate program, but when installed, it can delete data or damage hardware. Spyware is a software that records all keys, presses, and transmits these to a third party. Right, so spyware is a spy that is in your system, and it is better to be able to get any confidential information like you are going to press something like your CNIC, your uh, any phone number, or any personal information. It is recorded and it is with a third party without your consent. Right, and uh, then we have Edward. Adware is a type of software that displays unwanted advertisement on the computer without the user's consent. So this thing is actually happening everywhere, right? आप बहुत सारी games ऐसे install करते हो अपने systems में जिसमें ads आ रहे होते हैं, right? And you actually don't know that these things are viruses, okay? And ransomware is a type of malware that encrypts the user's file and demands a ransom payment to decrypt them. It can cause data loss and financial damage and disrupt business operations. Next, social engineering. So, social engineering involves manipulating individuals to gain access to confidential information or to perform an action that benefits the attacks, attackers, right? So, what happens in this case? You have to manipulate the individual to gain access to his personal information. Ko access karne ke liye. There are multiple techniques have been used. Jo, uh, this involves posing as someone else to gain trust or access to sensitive information. This can be used as a phishing forming as well. Like as a bhi hota hai, aap, aapne, कुछ लोग क्या करते हैं एक फेक आईडीज बनाते हैं एंड देन दे विल प्रिटेंड समथिंग समवन एल्स बट दैट्स एक्चुअली नॉट दैट पर्सन बिहाइंड द आईडी राइट जैसे कोई आपका फ्रेंड है राइट दैट्स नॉट एक्चुअली योर फ्रेंड बट दैट पर्सन वांट्स टू बी योर फ्रेंड तो वो क्या करेगा आपके पर्सनल लाइक आपके बेस्ट फ्रेंड की पिक्चर लगा के आईडी पे प्रिटेंड करेगा कि वो आपका बेस्ट फ्रेंड है बट दैट पर्सन इज नॉट एक्चुअली योर बेस्ट फ्रेंड and attackers might pretend to be a co-worker, IT support personnel or a law for enforcement officers to get people to divulge sensitive information or perform an action. Biting is most important thing and is the social engineering technique that involves enticing a victim with a desirable item or promise to extract sensitive information or gain access to a system. Attackers might leave a USB somewhere. Once the drive is connected to the system, then definitely attackers will get sensitive piece of information from your system through malware, spyware. Attackers might pose as a bank representative, imperson impersonation, biting, pretexting. There are a lot of social engineering techniques where somebody will manipulate you to get your confidential information it's actually not just happening through online but it's actually happening in our daily life as well so we have to pay attention when somebody is very mm, sweet with us somebody is very nice with us you have to make sure that what's the purpose behind that person's sweetness and niceness right if not if mm, so if, if there is no cost of something it means you are the uh, one who is actually being used. Then there are some uh, examples of accidental damages uh, when you are using internet and when you are using any software, a uh, sorry system. So that I can could be accidentally damaged in many ways. And see, let's say loss of power. So prevention as a prevention, you can use UPS. There may be some flooding, there may be some fire, there may be some hardware failure, there may be some software failure. So all of these examples, you have some preventions as well. If there is some hardware failure, so correct care and maintenance of hardware is required. This From these things, you can prevent your data to be lost.
right? Next is how you can keep your data safe. So there are a lot of things you can keep your data safe. First one is access level. You can restrict your user to uh, you can restrict your content that just only authorized persons can see that content. Whenever you are sharing something through Facebook, through Instagram, through YouTube, and through something else, uh, through any platform, you have to make sure that you have to select authorized persons right access level can be based on different rules it can be fully access read only and no access it can actually vary on application to application but whenever you are sharing something please make sure you uh, send uh, do not share your personal information with everyone right next is anti malware if you are using Windows 10 or 11, you don't need to install any uh, antivirus. In fact, you just have to update your system and make sure your system's privacy is active and firewall is active. Then there is no need to install new antiviruses. Otherwise, you, have, you need to use anti-malware solutions to prevent and remove malware, which is a common type of security threat to, to data. Anti-malware softwares include antivirus and anti-spyware programs which help to detect and remove malicious software. These softwares work by the scanning the computer's file and any file being downloaded and comparing them to a list of non-malware. If any malware is found, it is quarantined to prevent the spread. The malware is then deleted. I hope it's clear. Then you can use authentication. There are multiple ways to authenticate. The most commonly used authentication ways to factor authentication, where they will send you a text message, and then you have to verify that you are trying to log in your mobile phone. This two-way authentication can be achieved by providing your mobile phone number. And uh, you can use other methods as well, like you can set the passwords, you can set the biometrics, and uh, these methods will actually help you to protect protect your sensitive data. And third, you can do automated automating software updates. Automating software update ensures that software systems are up to date with the latest security patches which helps to prevent security threats this is especially important for operating systems and software that are frequently targeted by hackers it does this by scanning the internet for non updates to software which are installed on the computer if any updates are found that can easily install automatically or notify the users to install them Make sure your system is always up to date. All the softwares are up to date. There, then there will be you are actually keeping your data safe. Next is communication. Check the spellings and tone of communication is important. Check the URLs that is it the original one and fraudulent websites. Right as you can see, there are two websites. To give uh, I have given the two links. The first one is, see, this is, and one, this one, okay. Both looks original, but the second one is, this one is the original one, but this is not original. This is fake, right? So you have to make sure that you are using original link rather than the fraudulent links. Firewalls. Firewalls is basically the software. It will monitor incoming and outgoing traffic between the computers and the network. This will set the user's criteria for the traffic and it will actually block list all the websites which is not relevant and which is actually looking like uh, viruses. 
and it will accept or reject the traffic based on this criteria. So the next option is privacy setting. Please set your privacy that you are not sharing all of your piece of information with everyone. And the next point is the privacy servers. Because privacy servers are used to hide a user's IP address and location, making it more difficult for hackers to trap them. Right? They act as a firewall and can also be used to filter web traffic. Malicious content is blocked and a warning message can be sent to the user. Proxy servers are useful security measures for protecting against external security threats as it can direct traffic away from the server. Let's just see in next slide that how the prox proxy server will help us to keep our data safe. Okay, so see how the proxy server is going to work and how it's going to make us data, keep us data safe. First, the user will request some pages from the server. That request will be sent to the firewall. Firewall will send that request to the proxy server. Proxy server is responsible to deal with the requested website server. Proxy server will send the request to the requested website. And this server is going to send the request back to the proxy server. And then proxy server will send the request to the user. It means like there is a medium or a bridge between the uh, website server or the user server. So that medium is proxy server. So we cannot directly communicate with a requested website server and that server cannot send back to request it by itself. It has to use proxy servers as a medium. Another method for keeping our data safe is physical method. Physical method is used to physically protect hardware that stores sensitive data. This can be used as a lock room, CCTV, bodyguards, and so on. Next step is backup. So you can make create a backup, and if accidentally you lost some data. So you can uh, get the backup to your lost data. So this is the process of making copies of file in case something happens to the original one. Backing up data is important to protect against data loss due to hardware failure, cyber attacks or other disasters. Backups should be stored in a secure location and multiple copies should be made. Regular backups ensure that data can be recovered in the event of a security breach or a data loss. There are some ethics while using internet. Please do not be very addictive to email and social media. Do not breach copyright content. Don't cyber bully. Data protection is so important. Environmental effects. Fake news. Do not spread fake news. Do not share inappropriate materials. And if you found, please report. And uh, do not steal other people's work. Please take care of intellectual property of others piracy use piracy websites to gain content for free that should have been paid for and uh, plagiarism the copy of others people work without their permission do not do this if you are using their work please write down citations give that person some credit and the last but not the least the privacy do not leak any person's privacy Right, so whenever we are using an internet connection, so we have to make sure that we are feeling secure and the other person who's connected with us through any platform and through any medium, right? So we have to make that, that person's security as well.